sound means it's the beginning of a new episode of Bit Nerds. Welcome everybody to the show. Shout out to our friends Garden Classic, Garden Porsche of Las Vegas. They support the show, so uh, we support them and say thank you. Great people over there, God and Classic. Uh, my name is John Polnick. I'm your host, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. We are going to talk about the most interesting car of the day from all the auction sites, like P Car Market, Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, and more. And I got to tell you, Michael Deeb, this car is a I weird one. <laughs> yes, it's interesting. It's definitely weird, um, but I don't know F all about it. Why don't we uh, get right to it? What is it? All right, John, do you know how... Uh, Maybach used to be their own car company, but Mercedes owns Maybach. And so Mercedes will build a car on their platform that's more luxurious and more expensive and call it a Maybach. With that analogy in mind, I present to you the 2018 Lagonda Taraf, uh, which is on Bring a Trailer uh, from our friends down at uh, Symbolic Motor Car Company in San Diego, California. Now, Lagonda was their own British auto manufacturer that was founded in 1906, but they have been, the brand has been owned by Aston Martin since 1947, and they make cars from time to time, and then there are periods of time where they're not making any cars. So the last car that you might remember was the Aston Martin Lagonda, which was a luxury sedan that Aston Martin built between... 1976 and 1989 they built just 645 of those cars um 645 of those cars over that uh whatever it was 13 year plan um and that car had a 5.3 liter v8 uh and didn't sell very well and i don't know that that car was ever um offered um ever offered in the United States, but I do remember photos of that car and it's considered a lug, like a, you know, kind of an exotic sedan for its time It's very square and very long. And it's interesting because when you look at photos of the Taraf, it looks like an evolution of that Aston Martin Lagonda from then, but they haven't built a car in a long time. So Aston Martin's Q department in 2015, 2016 created the Taraf, um, which sold a couple of years later. They only made 200 of these cars exclusively for the middle Eastern market. Basically, Aston Martin took it the Rapide S platform and stretched it by 7.9 inches. They gave it a 5.9 liter V12 motor with a ZF derived eight speed automatic transmission, and then all the luxury accoutrement JP you could possibly imagine for your Middle Eastern billionaire. So, uh, BNO sound system, these cars all came with a standard refrigerator in the back of the car. Um, and then these cars sold for eight hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. That was the MSRP, about almost nine hundred grand. Now this particular car is showing just two hundred miles, and it was imported on the show and display clause with uh, the North American Traffic and Safety blah 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 blah, which means you can own this car, but you can only drive it about twenty-five hundred miles a year. I believe this car is on a an Oregon title. Um, out of Portland. And again, just 200 miles on it. I think somebody paid, they're saying that it cost um, $120,000 to bring this car in on show and display. So I have no idea what this car is going to sell for, but I did think it was very interesting. And uh, that sort of matte black paint scheme is wicked looking. I think the car looks really cool in that um, paint scheme. So JP, I send it back to you. Um, any love for the Lagonda Taraf? And do you think it stands a chance to break the bank and bring a million dollars, which is what I assume our friends at Symbolic is hoping is going to happen here uh, because somebody spent a dear, dear penny to bring this car in. I can't imagine what that conversation was like with bring a trailer with some like, you know, intern at bring a trailer trying to argue a reserve for a car nobody's ever heard of. That must have been like, um, you know, trying to argue with the shipping container uh, that it, that it doesn't get cold enough for your studio. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what a, what a, what a fool's errand that could have been. So JP, any, any love for the Taconda giraffe? I think it looks sexy. Like if you had, F you money or you were a crown prince of some nation, this would absolutely be a car I'd love to roll up in and get out of with a driver and the whole thing. But um, do you think, it, I think it looks really cool. It looks like the car Bruce Wayne would drive. What do you think? Uh, I can't imagine a car that fewer people want. I mean, this is, it's like, <laughs> They spent so much money to be, to, it's like, we have to make this. Why? 
Two people might want one. Who are those two people? <laughs> we don't know, but yeah. spend all the money now. I, it's just like, yeah. what? Who? Wh- yeah. Why were they? What on earth were? I mean, it's one. I mean, luxury cars, um, European luxury sedans, if there's anything depreciates more, I can't think of what it might be. No, I mean, you're right. You right. Know, this is like a, a, a Volkswagen Phaeton on steroids. I mean, what? In the world, who cares about this thing? I mean, I guess it's <laughs> the Phaeton's a good analogy, right? Didn't that thing come with a W12 and this car? Yeah, I mean, a, this is just the car big... that nobody asked for. I, yeah, yeah, it's neat. It's got lots of stuff. I mean, it better be freaking awesome if for a million dollars or eight hundred thousand dollars or however much, um, you know, they wanted for it. But I mean, look, how much does a repeat go for these days? Oh, I don't know. A couple you know? hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how much were and they Bentley. new? 400? I mean, Bentleys yeah. just depreciate horribly. I mean, all this stuff is just worthless a few years later. This is a 2018. How much could this be? What? It's like, <laughs> I mean, the only way I could see this working is somebody trying to like launder money for real. This is. Well, absolutely. I, I'm sure that's a part of it. I mean, again, they only made 200. When they designed the car, when the Q department was building this car in 2015, 2016, the market was up. But this car is a 2018, and at 2018, the market was way down. Now, I don't know what it looked like in the Middle East, and I certainly don't know what it looks like to the top 1% of the 1%, uh, which is the buyer for this car, even in Dubai or wherever it was sold brand new. Um, maybe those guys just have such some kind of FU money. They just have to have it. But they only built 200 of these things, John. And this has to be probably one of less than a handful that might actually exist in the United States. Um, it certainly seems like this is the one that uh, came. They, they created the show and display exemption for this very car. So this guy spent one hundred twenty thousand dollars to bring his in. The next one coming in, coming in for ten thousand bucks. So all that is interesting. The question is what it's worth. So I'm glad you're sitting John right down right now, John. Because with five days to go, our car is already up to five hundred and one thousand seven dollars. Five hundred one double oh seven. Get it? Um, and with that being said, the market—you know, like things, money costs a lot more than it did in twenty eighteen, JP. So even if this car depreciates, it still might bring sticker. So with that in mind, and the fact that somebody paid one hundred twenty to get it here. I do think this car is going to bring $800,000. So I'm going to give it to you at $880,000 and send it back to you and ask you not to laugh and blow a snot bubble right into your camera because our viewers are paying close attention. I, I don't have any problem with that bid. I mean, I don't, I have no idea. I have no earthly yeah, idea do I. what some idiot's going to pay for this thing. Um, Sometimes we see takes in the comments um, in our below that are that are pretty interesting. I mean, like I think there yeah. was a I want to say like a Mercedes Black um, yeah. that that we talked about recently, and I was kind of like, well, who's going to pay all that extra money for a CLK when there are tons of five thousand dollars CLKs laying around? And I think someone yeah. commented is like, well, yeah, but some people don't care; they just want to be they. Not everyone wants the bling factor. Not everyone wants to show off. Some people just want the performance and know and want something that no one else knows what it is and wants to kind of go in onto the radar. Is this yeah. kind of the ultimate expression of that? I mean, yeah. this particular car, if you pulled the badge off and put Kia on it, um, <laughs> <laughs> Genesis. Which, yeah. That could I, be the new Genesis prototype. You could yeah. totally do that. That'd be hilarious to put Genesis badges on that and go to Monterey Car Week and tell everybody, what do you think? Sign up with us. Give us your email address and sign up with us. If you would be interested in buying this top of the line Genesis, we're thinking about building it. This is a one off car. How many people would actually fall into that and not recognize the grill shape as distinctly Aston Martin? Well, I bet even, you but 100 out shape. of all. Yeah, 100 out of 100 people would absolutely think that you were telling the truth and that this wasn't some really crazy thing. Think about this, JP. Lagonda and Aston are both British brands owned by Aston Martin. This car was never sold in the UK. This car was, all 200 were exclusive for the Middle Eastern market. So um, I'm guessing they made money at $877,000 on this thing. Although when you only make 200 of something, even on a stretch platform, that seems absurd. It doesn't seem like you could charge enough to make the entire exercise profitable. 
Um, Aston Martin has a long history of making bad financial decisions, although they are doing well in Formula One this this year. So anyway, JP, that's that's everything I got. What was your bid? Eight hundred and eighty thousand, which is essentially MSRP. So where are you going to come in? I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, over gonna, under. I'm going over. I'm gonna go. 900 <laughs> and this thing's going to china that's my take yeah. i think uh, some, yeah, uh that's a good you know, take uh somebody over there at tiktok uh is buying it and yeah i don't the cars don't that go the cars that go to china we call them swimmers especially when they're ex- like you know crazy luxury cars they can't get over there yeah well what do you guys think uh somebody in the comments needs to maybe give us some information because this one you're definitely Ch- Stumping your, the chumps on this one. Your your China your China analogy means that the buyer, the the guy who's going to wind up driving this car home, mm-hmm. is paying one point eight, and that doesn't include the voyage because it's a hundred percent tax to get the car into China, yeah. and and that might actually make more sense than nine hundred in the U.S. Go sit yeah, on I mean, that I, the, the, the person that actually wants this in China doesn't care at doesn't all care. how much it doesn't is care. at all. I yeah. mean, yeah. one point eight, two point yeah. eight, ten million. They don't. That just means nothing to them. Yeah. Um, so it's tough for a guy like me to say, yeah, here's what I think. The Yeah. What do you guys think? I really can't wait to read the comments below. If there are any, this is the kind of thing where I'm concerned about doing a video about this car because I don't know who's going to click on this. No one's going to know what this is. Any, the, the algorithm isn't going to know who to feed this video to. What no. the hell is Lagonda Taraf? I mean, it, uh-huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. So uh, the, we know that there's six or seven people that watch the show no matter what we do. So thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ross, uh, Family Guy, 5150, uh, you know, Michael. All You guys are, are Qu- super core nerd herd. What yeah. do you guys think of this thing? How, how dyed in the wool a nerd are you? Would you rather, for free, have JP's 1995 Toyota pickup extra cab DX V6 4x4 in that thirty-four dollars to $50,000 range? Or would you take your chances on a Lagonda Taraf knowing that there isn't a dealer you can bring it to? It's too long to fit through the door anyways. Uh, in that eight hundred eighty dollars to $900,000 range, but you have to pay the registration. you got to pay the luxury tax, all that. What would you rather have? JP's Toyota or Deeb's Lagonda Taraf? <laughs> Deeb gets the Lagonda. You live in San Francisco. It seems like the perfect car to drive around oh, yeah. and have some. Could you imagine trying to, under it? as long as this wheelbase is, you couldn't get it over the, uh-huh. the hills to get to my restaurant. <laughs> All right, guys. Work. Let's find out right after this. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, Gun Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you got to check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, oh, oh this car. I am driving. That car. Rami, I'm driving <laughs> crazy stuff. Check out the Rami Show, our sister channel for car reviews. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, you stuck around this long to find out what happened with this boat anchor of a overpriced douchebag car. Um, <laughs> you know, going into the break, I had no idea what the heck this. I, I still, I'm still like baffled by this dumb thing, this Batmobile looking kind of. What happened, Deep? Do I? Does anybody care? I'm. Sh- yes, I'm everybody cares. People are on. You know, pins and needles. Pins yeah, and needles. I'll watch. This is going to be our highest rated, highest. I'm watch the show analytics, of all and it's time. just going to drop yeah. off. It's just as soon as we say what car is, we're like, what are we doing? Here? All right, what yeah. happened? Yeah, is that Taraf or Taraf? Yeah. <laughs> so this Taraf, this 2018 Lagonda Taraf, um, man, what a Taraf result, mm-hmm. uh, John. I really thought you know the car was. Eight hundred ninety thousand dollars new, and somebody spent another hundred twenty thousand dollars federalizing it for the U.S. So I said eight eighty. You took the over at nine hundred grand, which just cracks me up. Listen, neither one of us know anything about this car or what it's worth, other than its affiliation and under Aston Martin underpinnings. Uh, but our car met the reserve and sold 
for $505,000 on just 20 bids, which is a laughable result after I tried so hard to build this car up. I mean, good grief. It looks cool. And for half a million dollars, is it a bargain? I, I have no idea. If with only 200 miles um, and being five years old, it only brings um, – you know, half of its original uh, value. Imagine what's going to happen when this car has like 15,000 miles on it. Um, I, I'm afraid that this guy who bought it will drive it and struggle to get $200,000 for it in the secondary market uh, three years from now, which is when he decides to get off of it, if not sooner. So um, I don't say, I would not say the future looks bright for the Lagonda Taraf, um, but man, it's a cool looking car and i'm sure it's i'm sure it's beautiful in person i i would love to see it and drive it but i certainly wouldn't want to be the one left holding the bag um it certainly hasn't done well to this point um and it's you know geez i mean it's practically a one-off car one of 60 for the middle eastern markets uh jp there you go five hundred five thousand dollars for a taraf with no miles on it what happens after this guy drives it i mean we said it before the break that you know i mean Luxury sedans just are such boat acres. Um, yes, yeah. I took the over really, you know, admittedly completely wrong. You know, again, <laughs> another another wrong by 100% for JP. Yeah. Um, you know, I, but admittedly, I didn't know ahead of time. And I was thinking, well, I don't know, maybe there's some Chinese money out there or some, yeah. you know, because of its limited thing, you know, this car does belong in Vegas. You know, you do here in Vegas, you see a lot of rolls driving around in Bentleys and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, people are spending, you know, two, three, five hundred thousand dollars for some of those cars and you see a lot of them. So it's like, all right, well, maybe something like this, maybe someone will buy something like this. They have that same bling factor, but actually something that's rare. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I thought maybe, I, but I, clearly I'm wrong and I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy that this car didn't bring the number that I thought maybe it would. Because uh, really at half a million dollars, that's way too much money for this car. You're absolutely right. In a year or less, this thing's going to be worth 250 And a year after that, it's going to be worth 150 And a year after that, it's going to be worth like $75,000. This thing is going to be on cars and bids five years from now uh, for $60,000 <laughs> with 15,000 miles on it. I mean, it's just yeah. like any other, I mean, uh, you yeah. know. Any other lease return? <laughs> yeah, geez, what a, I mean, talk about fooling their money. Like Maybox, can you give those away? Hoobie's Garage no. buys them for like $30,000. They're yeah. worthless cars. Um, you know, like, I actually recently went out and drove, what was it, uh, an Aston Martin uh, Vantage S? Was it 2013? Uh -huh. Kind of the last of that. that yeah, yeah. So I always loved that body yeah. style. And I knew that yeah, S's were James supposed to Bond, be James Bond drove that car, didn't he? Right, and the smaller yeah. one, the earlier ones had the four point three, the smaller engine. Yeah, they were pretty anemic, even with the manual. Uh, but then they came out with that S one the last couple of years of that body twelve cylinder style. manual it, no, transmission. No, no, it wasn't. Yep. It was still the. It was still the eight. The eight. It was a, yeah, it was oh, the, okay, yeah. But it was a four point seven liter eight with a little bit yeah. more poop, and it had a real. You know, the transmission was a real double clutch. I mean, the, the thing really was a fun car. It still felt really yeah. heavy. You know, they try to say that, oh, this is what we built to compete with 911. It's like, come on. It's, but really neat car compared to the non-S version. Um, mm -hmm. But still, that's a car that was a hundred something thousand dollars new, and you could get it down at the Toyota, you know, Auto Nation lot for forty-five grand. Forty-five grand, you know, yeah. But still, looks like a million bucks. You roll that up, you know, to the casino, yeah. and everyone's like, "Damn!" You know, if you want bling <laughs> for the buck, that's the kind of car you get. Um, half a million dollars for this stupid four door thing. That's just, ugh, God, I, I just, man, sometimes rich people really are stupid. <laughs> um, as stupid as not rich people can be rich. People can be even more dumb. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think you're right on the money, right on the money. There it is. Um, all right, guys, what do you think of the results? Let us know in the comments below. We sure like to hear what you guys think of this weird-ass car. Have you even heard of one of these before? The nerd no. surprises me. Nobody's. Nerd, there's going to be a nerd out there that's going to be like, oh, my God, these are the most – that was a steal. You know, I don't know. Somebody. Somebody tell us. We're always wrong. We'll see you guys tomorrow. School, school us. School us. School us. Get those nerds!